So hey everyone and welcome back to another one of my videos. Oh, if you're new here then hello, welcome. My name is Luna Rose because I am the British Botanical Bombshell and for today's video I'm going to be answering your guys' juicy questions. So let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so I put a little post up on my Instagram this weekend to ask if you guys have any questions, literally an ask me anything. If you're not following me on Instagram, it is the period Luna period Rose. I will leave everything linked down below and I just figured we could answer some of these questions. I'm just going to go through in the order that they was kind of sent to me and literally I will answer every single question that was asked of me. So the first question is from that one 2023 and they said, what is your favorite aspect of drag? And I know all of it is fun, but what is the standout thing for you? Eyeshadow. Like, I enjoy drag because I enjoy makeup, and my favourite step of makeup is eyeshadow, eyeshadow palettes, just kind of playing around with colour, and I feel like eyes are kind of my favourite feature of myself anyway, so it all just kind of goes hand in hand of... I enjoy eyeshadow, I enjoy eye makeup, my eyes are my favourite feature, and I feel like you very much kind of focus on this, like, part of someone's face, so definitely the eyeshadow and kind of eye region, although I hate doing eyebrows. That is, like, my least favourite makeup, but it's adjacent to my favourite step of makeup. The next que- um, girl, I cannot pronounce your name, I will pop the questions up on screen, but they said, what tips would you give a beginner trying to get into drag? In terms of like makeup and doing your face, I would say more is more. Watch lots of tutorials. Even if that person doesn't have the same like bone structure and stuff as you, you can still learn tips that they do, why they do certain things, certain products that work for them. Since I study so many different queens faces and I have like hooded eyes, I have a round fat hamster face, I have a double chin. My face not is like isn't necessarily kind of the same as that queen's makeup, but I can see how she does certain things. I can kind of see the techniques that she uses. So I would say study other queens. Don't like directly replicate, but look at how they do certain things and kind of incorporate it into your makeup thing. The next thing that I would recommend is practice. Just keep playing around. Like who's really like, nothing's gonna happen if you don't do your makeup and you're not happy with it. Makeup comes off. You can easily remove makeup and try again. The next thing I would say is eyebrows make the biggest difference. Out of like anything on your face, changing up your eyebrow and eyebrow placement definitely kind of opens the world of drag up. And then in terms of like drag in general of what I would recommend, get some hip pads, get a corset. I know I like to wear my breastplate, but I always try to make sure that my hips are padded, my corset like you're cinching in my waist, and you don't just keep adding to the upper half since then you look too top heavy. So yeah, they would kind of be like what my tips would be is change up your eyebrow, study other queens, and don't forget about like cinching in your waist and padding out your hips, don't just focus on large breasts. It generally doesn't give you a better silhouette. If anything, it makes you look like more masculine. The next question is from Kennedy Diamond Drag, and they said, best items to get for new queens. I mean, it kind of depends on what look you're going for. I do have so many different tutorials, and there are a lot of products that I reach for time and time again literally every single time I get into drag. So in terms of what I would say the best thing for a new queen to get is a proper steel bone cinching corset. Honestly, it makes a very big difference to your overall silhouette. If you can just nip in your waist, particularly if you're wearing hip pads as well. I have videos on like all to do with body, which I will link down below, but highly recommend doing that. Just like what I said for my previous question. In terms of like best items for makeup, Something full coverage. The Krylon TV paint sticks, the Be Perfect Chroma Foundation, the Maybelline Superstay is another great one, and kind of what I cycle between is kind of those three foundations. Again, I have a full video on like the best makeup or like my favourite go-to makeup, and I still stand behind all of those products that I posted at the start of this year, but in terms of like best items, I guess it kind of depends like what you're going for. The next question is from Listermate, and they said, have you ever been buried in the sand at a beach? I did say, ask me everything. I was kind of expecting the questions to be, I guess, more to do with me and my drag and like social media content. But again, I said, ask me anything and I will answer anything. So have I ever been buried at the beach? Probably at some point. I haven't been to the beach in like a good five years, but 
probably at, at some point I've been buried in sand or I buried myself in sand. The next question from Listermate is also, do you like mud masks or sheet masks? I guess they're four very different things. Generally a mud mask is more like detoxifying, it's more got like charcoal in it and it's more for like clearing out the skin, whereas sheet masks are more for hydration and kind of putting stuff back into the skin. So I guess it depends on what I feel like. I am trying to get back into like a decent skincare routine and doing a lot more face masks and stuff, but I would say if I would pick one, I'd prefer a sheet mask just because they're less messy and you can kind of just like pop it on while I'm sat editing a video and I don't have to think about it, whereas mud masks dry out and they need to be like washed off. So I guess a sheet mask. The next question Listomate also asked me, you have a lot of questions, is have you ever slept or napped with a breast form on or a chest plate? No, never. Not once, not even thought about it. Wearing this and wearing a plate is very warm. Underneath a like silicone plate, you sweat a lot. So I, the only time I would do it is if I'd been filming for so long that I was so tired and didn't remove my makeup or anything. But genuinely when I get out of drag, the first thing to come off is the wig and then it's the plate. And then I like wash my face and remove the makeup. So nope, I have never slept in a plate. And honestly, I wouldn't recommend it just for your skin and your general comfort. Like I am someone that is like perpetually warm and I sleep with a fan on even in winter. So yeah, no, I wouldn't, I don't think I would survive sleeping with a plate on, to be honest with you. My next question is from Niall, and they asked me, what is, hell like, who is my favourite musician? Lady Gaga. I don't know why I had to think about it so much. I would say in terms of activism and inspiration, as well as the music, Gaga is definitely up there. I would say another one in terms of, like, big inspiration, and I also really enjoy their music, is Christina Aguilera. And then I guess Gwen Stefani, like if I could pick three, I would say at the minute they're like my holy grail top three of all time. Currently artists that I'm loving is Naomi John, Chapel Roan, uh, Sabrina Carpenter and Bambi Thug. They like literally I was listening to their music while I was getting ready today. They're like my four like current artists, but yeah, definitely like my big three is Gwen Stefani, Christina and Lady Gaga. It's gotta be Gaga first, like she, kind of came into my life with music and like expression and kind of inspiration at like that peak time of me like realizing myself. My next question is from Kenny. Hi Kenny, I love Kenny so much. You guys, I will leave that Instagram down below. They have been <laughs> there for me so much. So I just want to give a huge shout out to Kenny. Thank you so much for just being there and listening to all my rants and rambles and upset crying fits over like stuff that's been going on in life. But Kenny asked me, where do you see your drag in a year? Personally, for me, the rest of this year, like the next like five months, I really want to knuckle down on like a signature aesthetic. I have like a full series planned where I'm literally like, I literally filmed with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles palette today, where I create a look based around like every single eyeshadow palette. And I'm hoping by doing that series, it not only helps to grow my channel, it helps me do reviews and you guys can kind of like see my collection and kind of I guess see me play with makeup but I'm hoping through that series and just kind of by trying to film like five days a week getting dragged five days a week I find my signature aesthetic and I kind of find my place and where I fit in social media I also really want to start like I've never applied but at the end of this year when casting opens for glow up as well as RuPaul's Drag Race UK that is where I like kind of see myself going and the avenue going like down now so I guess in the year from now Hopefully I might be on TV at some point or at the very least I feel like my skills will definitely have improved and just overall I want to get back to being good and consistent with content creation and hopefully it like works out and I get more known on social media. I like find my signature aesthetic and not like I ever lost my love for drag but I'm hoping I find that like spark again of this is what I was like meant to do in life. And then my next question is from Jessica. They said, Luna, you have lots of dresses. What is your favorite one and why that one? I have a video coming up next week. I haven't actually filmed it yet, but next week I have a video coming up in like the most rhinestoned outfit I have ever seen in my entire life. Although it's a bodysuit, so technically it's not a dress. In terms of my favorite dress of all time in my collection, 
I have one that I haven't worn yet that I'm planning to wear around like Christmas time that's like a full tool like train outfit. I think that is gorgeous. But in terms of what I've worn on my channel, that pink rhinestone one, the pink mesh one with like rhinestones that I wore that got sent to me from Timu, I think that one is like comes to my mind as one of my favorite that you guys have kind of seen. But um, yeah, there's definitely some videos coming up that have in my opinion, the best drag that I could like take it to. My next question is from Ollie and they said, how big are your tits? It depends on the day, which is not a typical answer to that question. Currently, this is my breastplate from the boob shop and it is a D cup and it's my kind of go-to. So naturally nothing, but I would say in drag, Luna's like typical breast size is this D cup from the boob shop. And if you guys saw my Shein breastplate review, I said in that one, the breasts are very like, hoo -hoo, and like too pointed and forward. And I kept comparing it to my boob shop one. This is the boob shop one. It has like rounded, like they are round and not like oblong. So yeah, I would say typically a D cup, but I own C to X. So yeah, it kind of varies depending on the day to what size Luna's boobs are. They also asked me, do I currently fancy anyone? <sighs> no, not really, to be honest with you. This, like, since I moved from Cambridge to here now near Lincoln, for the last three years, I have not met up with a single person for a date. I have arranged a date, which I have a video on, and it ended up going, like, tits up. But, um... Do I currently fancy anyone? No. I've kind of been like in a very weird place with my mental health and depression and very low sex drive. So it's not really been like on my mind. However, I'm thinking when I get back into like a good filming routine or once I get back into a good mental state and just kind of everything sorted out in my life, I definitely want to start like dating and maybe introducing Luna to a few people. But um, currently, nope, no one. They also said, when did you first start drag and do I have any pre-Luna era pictures? Luna Rose has always been like my drag persona since I was like a young kid. So I guess it's always been Luna Rose, but I will try and look on an old hard drive that I have for like my old laptop, see if I can find any pictures since I have always enjoyed makeup and dressing up. And that was before like I had any wigs or like proper dresses. I used to, literally my favorite thing used to be is on a weekend, if my parents went out and my brother was busy, I would run into my mum's bed Bedroom, grab any random dress. I used to literally close my eyes and grab it because that was like the fun and inspiration. Grab a random dress, run back into my room, and I had three different eyeshadows from Barry M, the Dazzle Pots. I had like a black one, a blue one, and a green one, and I had to create a look based on those three colors to match the outfit, and I used to do photo shoots in my bedroom. So I guess when I first officially did drag with a wig and everything was like 18 at university, but from the age 10, I've been playing in makeup and like putting looks together. I'll see if I can find like pop-ups. My next question is from Kennedy Diamond. And they said, if you, if you could recreate a fictional character, but there was a drag queen, who would it be? Hmm. I do have loads of like looks planned and like costumes bought and like wigs that I styled for like Halloween last year which I'm hoping to do for like Halloween this year. And there's loads of like cosplay looks that I bought and like things that I want to put together. But I guess one of my favorites that I always want to do was Mystique, which I did a couple of years back. That was like one of those moments for me where I was like, this just makes me happy to do. But in terms of like fictional characters now that I would love to like, I guess do a drag look based on, I'm trying to think like, what is my current thing? I would probably say the evil queen from Once Upon a Time, that like black stacked up ponytail with a lace forehead and like a gown, I think would be a really like fun look. I'm trying to think like video games that I'm like obsessed with as like a certain character where I've always been like, if only, like if only I had the funds. Hmm. I do have a Samus costume, which I think will be a lot of fun to do a look for. I don't know, there's so many. Cause like I have, 
in my mind, there's like video game heroines and stuff that I want to do. I bought costumes for like all of the females from the Final Fantasy series. I bought costumes for the Street Fighter girls. I bought costumes for the Mortal Kombat girls, Resident Evil girls. Like I have costumes for Lux that I want to do in the future. I even bought like a full set of costumes for like Mario and Sonic and like Pokemon Evolutions, Digimon characters. Like I have hundreds of looks. Like genuinely, I could film a different look and never repeat an outfit for the next like three years. Not even like kidding. I have so many looks and plans for like what I want to do. I just kind of need to get my mental health like together and like a consistent routine. But um, yeah, there's a lot of cosplay looks hopefully coming around Halloween this year. That's going to be a lot of fun to do. But um, yeah, they were all of the questions that were on like my little Instagram reply for my stories. So um, if you have any other questions, leave them in this video like comment section and I'll screenshot them and answer them in a future Q&A. But um, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Again, comment down below if you have any other future questions. And don't forget to subscribe to The Girl Next Door with something more. And I'll see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Oh, that was a really powerful chunk of our outro. It's also like 30 degrees in this room right now. So <sighs> told you the first thing to go is the wig. And then literally the breastplate is um the next thing. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.